You may be seated. Good evening. Good evening. Such a blessing from God that we have our assembled ourselves here for a great celebration. That has been a program designed that we may be able to govern ourselves according to. This time you'll be in the hands of our mistress ceremony. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Good afternoon. We are here to remember and celebrate the life of Judge Joe J. Lewis. We honor Judge Lewis because of his love for life, family, and friends, and for the many lives that he has touched. Today, we will hear stories, we will laugh and cry and value the impact that his leaving will have, have on each of us. It is our prayer that every part of this service will honor a life well lived. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and I am life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? Today we are here to celebrate a life well lived. Judge Minister Joseph Janice Lewis, born into life March 21st, 1963, born in eternity March 31st, 2024. Today is Saturday, April 13, 2024, 2.30 p.m., St. Luther Church, giving honor to Pastor Polk in his absence who is the pastor of this wonderful church, uh, Bishop R.T. Clancy, who is, will be doing the eulogy, Pastor Shoulders, and Reverend Lee. Right now, we're gonna have the Old Testament by Reverend Paul Lee, the New Testament by Reverend James Shoulders, after which we will have a prayer by Pastor Darrell Courtney. The Old Testament scripture can be found in the book of Job, the 14th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Man that is born of a woman is of few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow, and continueth not, and doeth as thou open thine eyes upon such a one, and bringest me into judgment. Who can bring a unclean thing out of an a clean thing out of an unclean thing, seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, thou hast 
upon it his bounds that he cannot pass. May the Lord add a blessing to the reader, hearer, and doer of his word. Our New Testament is taken from the, one of the Gospels of Jesus Christ, of St. John in the 14th chapter, began reading at verse 1, to this family, to Mr. Lewis, and to all the rest of you all, the family, we certainly praying that God will see you through these times. These is some time that all of us must go through. The word of God for the peoples of God. Let not your heart be troubled. Remember this family, let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mentions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, the Bible said, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, that ye may be also. Thomas said unto the Lord, we know not where you are going, but how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way family, Jesus is the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come into the Father except by me. I'm going to say to him, Lord, we know not where I'm going. We don't know. But if you serve, God has a place. For each and every one of us. The word of God for the people of God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Hallelujah. We thank you, praise God. Amen. For this opportunity that God has given to us for such a time as this. Yes. To this family. Amen. The friends. Uh, Miss Joe and the boys and the girls. Uh, this was uh, my friend. Amen. I, a lot of respect for Brother Lewis. Amen. In many ways. Uh, I was glad to. Uh, won't be before you long. I want to just do a prayer, but I want to just say these words that I told Brother Lewis a few weeks ago, uh, about three years ago. Brother Lewis came to me and told me, say, Brother D, as he was rededicating himself back to God, he said, Brother D, I want you to baptize me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And lots of time we don't realize how important it is to get our business fixed on this side of the, of the fence before we cross over. And I told Brother Lewis it was an honor that I was able to take him down in Jesus' name. Amen. It was an honor in that precious name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. It's an honor. And Brother Lewis had already told me, he said he had received the gift of the Holy Ghost. It was, a, it was an honor. It's an honor. Amen. Amen. And Brother Lewis was coming to our prayer services. Amen. Faithfully, even on night services at times. 
And he's always, amen, he just said, he said, Brother D, I just want to make sure I'm ready. Yeah. Lots of times people don't take this seriously. He said, I want to just make sure I'm ready. You know, one thing about love by God, amen, your past with God can just be your past. Amen. But when it's covered under the blood, amen, when it's just covered under the blood, hallelujah. And I told Brother Lewis a few weeks ago, and I know he's been having, dealing with his issues and things of that nature, and this cancer is for quite some time. And this time, I said, Brother Lewis, what do you want God to do for you? This is what I told him a few weeks ago. In his raspy voice, he said, I just want to make sure I'm right with God. That's what he told me. He said, I'm tired, Brother D. He said, I want to make sure I'm right with God. And I had no idea uh, Ms. Joe was going to allow me to say these, to, the, to do the prayer. But I told Brother Lewis, see, we're living to live again. Death is, ain't, death is not bad when you're in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's my hope. That's my hope. I'm living to live again. Hallelujah. There's a home on the other side. Hallelujah. And I told Brother Lewis, and when he told me that, amen, I told him if I ever, amen, had an opportunity, amen, whether I went first or he went first, Amen. I want you to tell him, amen, these verses. Just tell them these things that I'm telling you all right now. Amen. amen. There's only one way. It's only one way. Amen. It's only one way to be saved. Amen. I'm going to stand on that. Amen. I stand on the baptism in Jesus' name. I stand on the Holy Ghost and feeling of God's spirit. I stand on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I told Brother Lewis, amen. Uh, uh, it was an honor, amen, to, amen, uh, met him years ago, amen, on my other side when he was a judge and standing in his courtroom for doing all my crimes, amen, amen. Then I met him again, amen, in the body of Christ, amen. God, can, amen, can do great, wonderful things, amen. But at this time, we're going to pray, amen, that God will continue to bless his family, amen, that God will, amen, bless the man servant that will spring forth the word, amen, and that we would all, amen, take in, amen, something that we can take out, amen, because we need to make our call in, in our election, sure, hallelujah, let every heart pray, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God, we praise you, Lord God, we appreciate you for your love and kindness, for your multitude of your tender mercies, Lord God, we ask you right now, Lord God, that you just comfort this heart of these people on today, Lord God, I pray right now in Jesus' name, Lord God, hallelujah, that you will bring about, Lord God, comfort right now, Lord God, encouragement, Lord God, of grieving hearts today, Lord God. But most of all, God, I pray right now, God, that we will all take a look at ourselves, Lord God, to make sure, God, that we're in the faith or not. Lord God, I pray right now in Jesus' name, oh God, thank you for your ministering angels, God, that you have encamped round and about us, oh God. Lord God, I pray right now, Lord God, that you will just continue, Lord God, to draw us near you, God, with your love and your kindness, Lord God. Help us right now to make our call in an election sure, oh God. Lord God, I pray right now in Jesus' name, oh God, I thank you right now, Lord God, for the cross. We thank you right now, hallelujah, Lord God, for life, God. We appreciate you right now for the air that we breathe on today, Lord God. Lord God, we just want to be right when you call us home, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you today, Lord God. We praise you today, God. Hallelujah. It's by your anointing, oh God, to destroy every yoke of bondage, Lord God. Lord God, now we ask you on today, Lord God, that you take move on this service on today, Lord God. Hallelujah. We rebuke any foul spirit, anything that's not like of thee, any confusion, Lord God. Anything, Lord God, that was strained, oh God. Hallelujah. We pray right now, Lord God. Let it be an easy flow, Lord God. Hallelujah. Let the anointing move, oh God, at free will, Lord God. Let it take root over every head in here on today, Lord God. Every heart today, Lord God. Prick us on today, Lord God. Convict us on today, God. Constrain us with your love and your kindness on today, Lord God. Hallelujah. We'll be better, Lord God, than we came. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the people say amen. Now we will have a selection by Sister Vivian Townsend, 
and words of encouragement by Pastor Clyde Tate. Praise the Lord. John, you already know I love her, that's my sister. And I have to admit, this is a hard one for me. But God can get us all through it. May the works I've done speak for me. May the work I've done speak for me. When I'm resting in my grave, there is nothing, nothing to be said. May the works I've done speak for me. May the life I live speak for me. May the life I live speak for me. When the best I try to live my mistakes, he will forgive. May the life I live, oh Lord, speak for me. The work I've done seems so small. Sometimes it seems like nothing at all. When I stand before my God, I want to hear him say, well done. May the works that I've done speak for me. May the service that I give speak for me. May the service that I give speak for me. When I've done the best that I can and my friends don't understand, may the service I give Speak for me. The work I've done seems so small. Sometimes it seems like, seems like, seems like nothing at all. When I stand before my God, I want to hear him say, well done. May the works I've done, may the works that I've done, may the service that I give, May the life, the life I live, may the works that I've done speak for me.
I knew that uh, Pastor Tate had a, another funeral service, so if and when he comes in, we will allow him that time to speak. But after hearing those words, may the work I've done speak for me. I want those of you who are here where Judge Joe Lewis work spoke for, for him by helping you in his courtroom. Okay, let's stand up for those of you who have been helped by Judge Joe Lewis in the capacity of judge in the courtroom. Okay, those of you who have been helped by Judge Joe Lewis who was in the capacity of the county worker who probably gave you some code enforcement and told you he'll come back later to, to make sure everything is okay. Will you stand? All right. I would like for his classmates of Mora to stand. Amen. His Alconites classmates to stand. No Alconites in the house? Okay, one. Okay, okay. <laughs> the I love. Jackson State. All right. And I would just also like to ask all of the funeral directors from all over the state of Mississippi and out who are here on, ben on behalf of Joe Lewis, where his work is speaking through him that he has had some kind of impact on a relationship with them. Thank you all for coming. And I, and I told you when I started this that I was gonna, we was gonna have the opportunity to laugh. So the first laugh would be on me. Joe and I, I have known Joe for about 50 years. And um, I'm, I'm the person at the front desk now at People's Funeral Home because of Joe Lewis. He called me on the phone and asked me if I would come and be the receptionist at People's Funeral Home. Uh, of course, you know, when we're having visitations, people come down and, and one of the classmates, uh, I said, oh, I had not seen you in so long. And so Joe walks through and uh, I said, this is uh, Joe Lewis. I said, we've been knowing each other ever since we were little children. Joe said, nah, -uh. you don't, don't say that. We've been knowing each other ever since uh, we were younger because you ain't never been little. I said, well, <laughs> ain't that the pot calling the kettle black? <laughs> so it is, those are the things that I miss. And he would bring that ray of sunshine, a little chubby, little fat boy with those fat cheeks that I will always remember. He has not changed in that bright light of having somebody to walk into the funeral home. He's going to call my whole name. And even though he say I'm that little fat girl, he will always, and I don't know how he did it. Joe would be the only somebody that can find me that bluebell lemon ice cream. I mean, I'd be up and down Kroger's looking up and down. I'm out of shields. I said, what, Joe? I got that ice cream. <laughs> so those are the little funny things that you're gonna miss and those things that you cherish about an individual. And right now, we're gonna have as a childhood friend, Mr. Elbert Smith, as a coworker, Judge Don Palmer, as a neighbor, Mr. John Shorts, and as a classmate, Reverend Pete Lacey and Miss Allie Bomsky Lewis. Greetings, greetings. Uh, to, the pa to the pastor, greetings, greetings. to the pastor um, of this house in his absence, to the other pulpit get guests, to um, other clergy, clergy and teachers and preachers of God's word, um, greetings. To the bereaved family, to the many cousins and nieces and nephews, and um, to Lenore and Peggy, uh, to Johnny's wife, um, my heartfelt condolences to you. Uh, and John, I thank you for the opportunity just to recognize Joe as a childhood friend. Um, <clears throat> I ran into Joe about 50 years ago, um, fifth grade, Johnson Elementary School, and we just hit it off. We, we, we just kept, became friends, you know, and, um, and, and little did we know that our journey would take us 
for the rest of our life. Um, Joe and I just matriculated from Johnson to Brinkley Junior High, Merle. We went to that great university, all corn together. Over 50 years, and we just we just became friends. Now let me give you some tell you who Joe was even as a child. You know you could always depend on Joe. You, he, he, one thing he was he was dependable. He was always confident. You know sometimes he was a little too confident, but he was real confident. He felt real sure about whatever he did and took pride in it. You know, almost to the point where you know you didn't you wanted to get away from him. But he was he was real confident. He was just a good person. He was, he was a natural protector. He was a provider, you know, and um, he, he was a leader, you know, even at that young age, you know, and, and one thing else, you know, Joe just, he was just a straight shooter. You know, if you didn't want his opinion, don't ask him, because he was going to give it to you and say, you know, you, 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 you shouldn't ask me. And so, you know, uh, and, and it started, you know, we, as safety patrol at the Johnson Elementary School, you know, Joe would always keep his belt was always clean and the, the buck would be shining, and Joe just, he would always be on time, and he just took pride in what he did. You know, it, it, it led, as we, went, as we went to Brinkley, you know, um, a lot of people not, may not know, you know, we, we just called Doc, Joe Doc for a while. Well, what happened, Joe got an opportunity to be a trainer. And so Joe had took it and, and, and got so serious and focused in it, one of the coaches said, you walk around like you some type of doctor. And, uh, and Coach Sherry said, man, y'all leave Doc alone. And so we just teased him and called him Doc you know, from then on. And as we went, went to Merle, um, you know, Joseph's favorite football player was D.D. Lewis, linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys, war number 50. And so we just knew all through, if, if he got a chance, he was gonna be number 50. When we first got to, to practice, when we first got there, you know, um, we were in ninth grade, you know, you can't come in and get nothing. And I can't remember what the jersey number was, but we went a couple of days and Joe didn't have number 50. He was, he was just miserable. And then all of a sudden, the third or fourth day, Joe come out to the field house with number 50. And everybody looked, but nobody asked any questions, but he was, he was number 50 from that point on. And, uh, <clears throat> and you know, and, and we, we matriculated from Merle, went to Alcorn, and, and, and probably 50% of the stuff I shouldn't have done growing up, I was with Joe. And, 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 and more so, you know, at Alcorn. You know, we, we just had a good time. I had several, I, I went through several, you know, funny things that we had, it was so many, and um, I just, I couldn't get around, but, but, but you know, but we just, we, we shared a lot of things together, you know, family moments, um, first child, marriages, um, um, you know, friends, you know, passing, we just, we just shared so much together. And one thing Joe would always do, um, my birthday is March 26th, Joe's birthday March 21st, and he would always call and text on my birthday. And so I got an opportunity to go see him um, when he got out the hospital. And I walked to the door when, I, when Johnny let me in, he looked, the first thing he asked Johnny, he said, what's, what's the date? Because I went on the 25th. And I said, boy, you know what the day is. You know, I said, you know what the day is. And so we just kind of had a chuckle. And I appreciate the opportunity to see my friend. And here's my one little story. I changed it so many times. And I changed it when I, ca when I came in here again. When I saw the banner, I changed it. Cause see, I think it was the, the, the eighth or ninth grade, Joe made me take an oath. If anybody asks me, asks you what my middle name is, you can't tell them unless I tell them. So when I saw Judge J, J. Lewis, Judge Joseph J. Lewis, I said, oh, he told me middle name, his middle name, huh? But uh, you know, I just enjoyed him as a friend. He will be missed, but uh, my heart is full. And I think if you know Joe, you know he knew Jesus Christ was his Lord and Savior. And, and, and there's no reason for your heart to be full. Be filled with joy because I knew without a shadow of doubt that that young man knew Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you all. Afternoon. <clears throat> I thank God for my being here at this place and time. I uh, thank uh, Sister Johnny for giving me the honor to have a few words on behalf of Judge Joe Lewis through the uh, pastor, 
the pastor's guests, uh, pastors that may be in the congregation, um, friends, extended family. Uh, truly an honor to be here and to have a few words. Uh, I met Judge Lewis, I want to say, probably around about 1995. So I can't say 50 years, 30 years. <laughs> but in those 30 years, him serving as a justice court judge and me as a deputy clerk at the Hines County Justice Court, I often had the opportunity to sit in the courtroom with him. And if I had to say a few, well, uh, a few traits, let's just say intellect, charismatic, Mm, comedic, straight shooter. As the gentleman said before me, straight shooter. If Joe was for you, you knew Joe was for you. If Joe wasn't for you, you knew Joe wasn't for you. And that's on, that's in, on personal issues as well as political issues. That's how he is. He's going to let you know where he stands. And if he's got you, he's got you. Um, oftentimes, well, actually, we, we Form all. I, I don't want to step on anybody else's toes, but it was like a brotherhood. Because Joe, when my father passed in 05, I'm from Grenada, Mississippi. Joe made the drive. Not only did he make the drive, though, he stayed for the repass. And then you know how we do as black people, we go back to the house. Joe came back to the house and stayed until about midnight, having to travel back travel back. So it was a brotherhood. We would often talk on the phone uh, about issues. Uh, we'd talk about politics. We'd talk about the Lord. Joe knew the Lord. He did. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, again, I want to say to the family, thank you for this honor. Thank you for our, his service in the community. His service as a Justice Court judge as well as his service in the community and other capacities. I say to Johnny and the rest of the family, hold to God's unchanging hand, for he will give you the strength, the peace, and the comfort to get you through this difficult time. God bless you and God keep you. Amen. Praise God. Giving honor to God. We thank God for, once again, what's all that has been said. We give honor to God and to the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, to the clergy, and to the family. So, Sister Johnny, uh, Lenora, all of them, uh, those that I know are sitting over there. Uh, I kind of know where you where you where you feeling right now, uh, knowing I lost my mom about, uh, back in September. So all of us feel your pain, and we are pulling for you to get through this. Uh, just like to talk a little bit about uh, my friend. <laughs> yeah, we called him. When we was coming up, we called him Joey. Yeah, yeah, we called him Joey. A lot of people don't know that. Um, we, uh, man, we were so close coming up. Uh, uh, we just would go, you know how children are. We, back in the 70s and 80s, uh, late 60s, I'll go all the way back when he was a child. And uh, he'd be sitting under my table and our table, and we, I'd be sitting under that table. Uh, Miss Lewis, uh, 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 Daddy Pratt, and all of them, and they, we loved each other. Uh, we conversed with uh, Dr. Margaret Walker Alexander and all the greats on our street, and they were mentors uh, for us. We learned a lot. I'm hanging around those who had already uh, assumed their uh, path in life. So Joey and I were very close. Uh, you know how the days was where uh, getting dark, 
And you know that your parents don't call. One will walk back down the one way and, and they'll walk you back. And then you meet in the middle and you go home. Amen? We was very, very, very close. Uh, Lenora, uh, I knew every, we knew everybody on the street and they all knew us. We were all children growing up under a large family. Amen? Uh, but later on, our past uh, took their way, as will most of us, uh, as destiny has its place. Uh, but one thing about it, the destination, if you're in Christ, is the same. Amen? Amen. Then that's the destination is the same. So I wanted to just encourage the family, know that you don't get over the pain overnight, but you learn that God's process has its place. Joe uh, always treated me fairly. He set me up with my first job, worked at 31 years. I think that was pretty good. <laughs> Joe was good about that. He was good about uh, setting the tone good. He wanted to be out front. He wanted to uh, be a leader in everything that he did. And he was. He worked tirelessly. He worked until he couldn't work. Amen? Amen. So my prayer is that uh, we do not sorrow so much for him so his work is done. The scripture tells us in Psalms 90, very familiar passage of scripture, that we, it teaches us that uh, Moses said to God, teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. It's not about how many years that we live. It's about what we've done. Don't, 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 uh, don't, don't go down there talking about how many years, how old you are. State your case. Then I fought a good fight. I kept the faith. I finished my course. These are the things that you have to do in life. Job never retired. <laughs> He just faded away. That's what I want to do. I don't want to retire. When Joe was sick, I cut his grass. And that's what I do for a living now. I just, I cut grass. I, you know, I'm a maintenance guy. And uh, when he got sick, I, I noticed the grass was getting high. And I started cutting his grass. And he came home one day, he looked around, he said, did you cut my grass? He stopped at my house, he saw me. He said, did you cut my grass? I said, yes, I cut your grass. I knew something. I knew that something was going on. So I went on and did what I had to do. This is what he did in his life. He saw a need, and he filled it. That's what we got to do. We got to meet the need. A job well done is not in terms of how many years we've been around, but what we've done. This is a life that was worth living because he lived it with meaning, with everything he had. Serving his community, serving his uh, family, his uh, community through the funeral home, meeting need. He never retired. That's the way I want to go out. I'm proud to say that he is my friend. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Dr. Good afternoon. To my pastor in his absence, to all the clergy on, uh, on the roster and everybody here today. I'm here to talk about my friend, my brother, my neighborhood, 
Road Dog, whatever you want to call him, Joe Lewis. Um, Joe and I go all the way back to Brinkley. From Brinkley to Mara, to Mar from Mara to the number one HBCU in the world, Alcorn State University. And once we got to Alcorn, Joe has always been a protector. And when we got to Alcorn, I was wondering why people were, I guess, my friend but kind of shielding away from me. Later to find out Joe was telling everybody we were married because we <laughs> had the same last name. So, but that was his way of protecting his baby sister only by three months. But that was his way of protecting me. And I appreciate that and, you know, until the end, when I went to see him in the hospital, Bunsky and Joe and Johnny are the only ones that can call me Bunsky. I don't know where that name came from, Johnny. But they're the only ones that can call me that. And that's just out of love. And I'm going to miss my friend. I'm going to miss his laugh. You know, it, it may take him two months, but he'll call me Bunsky. I got something to tell you. I'm like, all right, Joe. And I'll be at work. And I have to forget, and I will forget that I'm at work because we'll stay on the phone for about an hour. And he'll say, okay, I got to go. And we'll talk another 30 minutes. But that's just what friends do. We may not talk every day, but when we talked, we talked, we laughed, we caught up. And so even though we were not there physically every day, we were always together in spirit. And so I know he'll always be with me in spirit. And Johnny Bumsky is here for you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. God is still good. In spite of what we're facing right now, God has prepared a place far beyond what we see. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I'm going to ask class of 81 to stand. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We certainly honor Pastor Pope in his absence, uh, to Bishop Clancy, to, this, to the rest of the brethren, amen, to this beautiful family. I've never met Sister Johnny. God bless you, sister. Amen. We certainly thank God for the life and legacy of Joe Lewis. Amen. Two things I would like to say about Joe Lewis. Number one, he tried to help everybody. Amen. As a classmate, he did all he could to encourage us, or me. Maybe I should say that. And I heard someone say earlier that he was a leader. He had leadership capabilities and skills. He always wanted to be number one. And we praise God for that spirit. Also, he made a difference. Will you all help me say that? Joe made a difference. He made a difference. There's countless number of lives that Joe touched throughout the years. And as a classmate, Joe developed himself into being a leader. He had a love for people. I had no idea that Joe was a minister. But after reading this obituary, it helps me to realize that it doesn't matter what we face, God is right there with us. And aren't you glad that life goes beyond what we see right now? Amen. There's hope beyond the grave. There's hope beyond what you and I are wit witnessing right now. We certainly thank God for his abilities that he had. He was in a position to where he could help others, and he did that. He made a difference uh, with our class. Joe was a leader. He, he loved people. And more than anything, Joe had a love for his family. Amen. We thank God for that, and we thank God for this opportunity. I encourage you today to look to the hills which come at your help because God is right there. 
to be with you every step of the way. God bless this family. God bless this class. We honor you. We appreciate you. And you all be blessed. Amen. Now we will have as a spiritual praying friend, Sister Annie Mae Epps Moore, as an usher, Ms. Sister Tammy Rankins, and as a lifetime brother, Mr. Morris Gronk Townsend. Good afternoon, praise the and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To Pastor Polk, to my pastor, Bishop Archie Clancy Sr., to my first cousin, Dr. James Shoulders, to the other ministers on the Roscoe, to all the pastors, ministers, elders, and all the people of God, I want to say thank you. I sit in the seat where Miss and Sister Johnny is sitting. And I say that because Joe asked me for my hand when I was a young woman. I had three children, but I told him no. I was raised in the hood and I thought I had bad children. So I made that choice for my children. I knew he was a respectful man, and I didn't want my children to mistreat him. I'll just use that word, because I, I didn't know. I was young, and I didn't understand. And he told me, he said, Anime Epps, you got some good children. But I had already told him no. So there was a dog came out, hug a bunch. And you know, at that time, Joe was kind of stout. So I named him hug a bunch. And he was always my hug a bunch. When I did marry, he was the one to pull up in my house in a white limousine to take me to get married. And by the way, my name is Annie Epps Davis. That's my sister's name, Moore. So he was the one that brought me to Pentecostal Temple, 960 Kane Street, to marry Fred. He was the first judge that I stood before. I had bought Fred a Elected 225. It was his house across from the funeral home, and Mr. R.B. wanted to sell it, and I asked him, could I buy it? So my daughter gonna sneak off in the car and uh, hit this lady's car down the street. Oh, I'm gonna sue you, I'm gonna sue you. She ain't had nothing but just a fender bender. I was so glad that I was, went before Judge Joe Lewis. Oh, she gonna pay me, she gonna pay me. He told me to come to the to the uh, approach the, the bench, and I said, my daughter did hit her car. I said, but here are the pictures. It's just a fender bender. He told us that Anime Epps, you pay her $50 a month. I ain't over 250, but 250. That's all he took, 250. He said, we're gonna show her something. We're gonna treat her right, but you give her $50 a month, and don't give it to her before, and don't give it to her after. <laughs> So I do thank and praise God for that. I was his prayer partner for years. I sent him morning devotions every morning. We talked back and forth almost every day. His last request, along with Sister Johnny, was for me to be his caretaker. He was tired, and he knew Sister Johnny was tired. So she called me, I said, um, he want me to be his caretaker, but he didn't give me all the information that I needed. So she called me, she said, we, we had a long, tearing conversation, and I said, yes, I will do it. She called me and she said, he told me to get me some rest. When she woke up the next morning, he had gone to heaven. Well, he had already told us a couple weeks ago 
the body is here, but I'm already in heaven with the Lord. That was his last request. I do thank and praise God for him being a great friend. By the way, we stayed, we stayed across from the funeral home and we stayed next door to the funeral home. Y'all know them Epses, they gonna make you laugh, they do all kind of crazy stuff. And he would just get right over there and get with us. He would get with them black folks, cause we were black. Or we carried up a rucker. <laughs> but I wanna leave this with you. He was a dear friend. My mom died, it would be her anniversary, April 29th. I took her to work that morning. Bell Haven was having their graduation. And I said, Mom, I'm gonna go to work and I get off at 12, I'll come back and get you lunch. So I called my brother Edgar, I said, uh, keep mom. He said, okay, but I said, where are you? I'm going, I said, no, Mom, you going with me. I got her breakfast and I went to clock in. I didn't get to the time clock. My sister said, something wrong with mom. I rushed back, she died in my arms at the Mississippi Coliseum. Joe drove me to the services and Sister Johnny drove me back. You can't find better friends. You can't find better friends. So I want to thank and praise God for uh, just being able to be his prayer partner. And I'm going to leave this with you and I'm going to go. We all have a work to do for the Lord. We can do it now or we can do it later. I've already heard what he did. He did his work while he was here because no man can do anything when they're gone. The dead don't know what the living do. So we have to help each other. As, as, as Pastor uh, Darrell said, he was baptized in Jesus' name. I believe with all my heart that he spoke in tongue because you got to have the Holy Ghost to go back to heaven. That's your ticket to get out of here. That's your two wings to get out of here. Y'all hear Paul Porter sing that two wing? If you don't have the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongue, you ain't going nowhere. Find you some Bible-based church that teach what Peter said on the day of Pentecost. And I guarantee you, you're going to leave here. You're going to go meet Jesus. I, I can't even finish this, but God gave me this in 2001. We all have a work to do for the Lord. We can do it now or we can do it later. I want you to always remember the fifth book of Acts. Peter said, you got to repent. You got to be baptized in Jesus' name. You got to get those sins washed away, and you got to live a Christian life. You say he's your personal savior, then start living it. We don't live it on Sunday. We live it seven days a week. Oh, you got to get it. God bless you, and I love you. And we know we're going to be there for Sister Johnny. But we better get what we need before we cash out of here, because Joe got his. God bless you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. God to the poor pit, to the family, to God, to my godmother, Johnny, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tent of wicked. Psalm, Psalms uh, 8410B. Knowing that of the Lord. You shall receive the reward of inheritance. You shall receive the reward of inheritance. For ye serve the Lord Christ. Colossians 3 and 27. Most of us know that being an usher is not easy. It's not one of those easy jobs. You come, you sit down, and you're done. It's not an easy job. You have to prepare yourself for any and everything that can happen. So, the first time you come into church, the impressions, the experience you have as a visitor, you know, as an usher, we want you to have a good experience. It don't always act, work like that. But if you knew Big Joe, you already knew he would fit right in. You knew that he would welcome you with open, open arms. As an usher, we have to be teachable, be thoughtful of people. We don't know who's coming in and what they have going on. 
tactful in the way you talk to people, and work as a team. Big Joe was all those things and more. Thank you, Big Joe, for having a big heart and sharing your talent with all that you came in contact with. Thank you, Big Joe, for the many conversations we had in the middle of Skyline Drive. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And I know that what, what Big Joe did. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Well done, thy faithful servant. Well done. Take your rest, Big Joe. Pray the Lord, church. Uh, Y'all see the title of Lifetime Brother? <laughs> that he was. Everett, John, he talked about y'all a lot. And when I came into his life, he gave me that title as Lifetime Brother. We have, we've done a lot together. Tell you little things, um, when Johnny was carrying little Joe, and we was walking, we was, we was all over the place, and he called Johnny and said, ain't you ready to go to the hospital? She said, look, I done had some cheering before. I know when it's time. <laughs> so Joe said, well, uh, let's just go on and, it's Johnny T's now, but it used to be the bird land. So we, we hung out at the Birdland, and Johnny called us and said, I'm in labor, and we rushed to the hospital. And it was this young nurse at the hospital in labor, and we walked in there, and she said, uh, nobody come in here but the daddy. And Joe said, well, that's why we both here, because we don't know who is the daddy. <laughs> so I looked at him, and Johnny, Johnny was hurting. She was, Johnny was hurting. Johnny said, I'm going to get both of y'all. So this senior nurse showed midnight. Midnight came and this old senior nurse came by. And she said, what are you doing here? And, I, and Joe said, well, we seeing, we gonna wait till little Joe is born and see who the daddy is. She said, she looked at me, she said, you get out of here. <laughs> you just get right on out of here. Well. I moved away from here 19 years ago and moved to Detroit. Grant you, Joe was my best man, and, and y'all forgive me, but y'all don't, don't judge me, but he was my best man in one of my marriages. <laughs> uh, it didn't last, so I moved to Detroit Called myself, I wasn't gonna get married no more. Met my present wife, who's on the organ, Miss Vivian Townsend. I called Joe and I said, Joe, got something to tell you. He said, what? I said, I'm getting ready to get married again. He said, you crazy, and I ain't gonna say what he said to me. <laughs> but that was the kind of brother I had. My memories are what I have left and a lesson left was once before. The memories so dear and true, those memories of me and you. Although we fell and stumbled at times, although hills was necessary to climb, all the times we were in hearts shining through are the greatest memories I have of you. I will always remember you, brother of mine. In my heart, I will keep you, so I will be fine I will go forward with my head up high. It might be hard, and I cannot lie. But in my heart, you will be moving forward. You with me. Now, y'all that know that, that Joe, when we get to the cemetery, he would always 
have a little speech that he wanted to um, say, but I know I'm not going to be able to do it at the cemetery today, but I just want to do it right now while I'm standing here. And y'all that know my best friend, Joe, he would, he would tell you this, don't stand at my grave and weep. I'm not there. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds to blow, that blows. I am the diamond glistens on snow. I am the sunlight of rife and grind. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awake in the morning, hush. I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circling fight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. I am not there. I didn't die. We want to thank each of you for those wonderful words and sentiments about our friend, our classmate, our brother, Judge Joe Lewis. Truly a life well lived and a brother well loved. The acknowledgments. Of course, I will not read all of these acknowledgments, but I would just like to give the names of the individuals who have reached out to the family. We have uh, the House, the Mississippi House of Representatives, a resolution from Constable Lawrence E. Fonches. Eddie Fair, tax collector. Judge Tabitha Britton Porter. Representative Bo Brown. Uh, the Mississippi State Senate, City of Jackson, Councilman Brian Grizel, the Pat Brown Lifetime Achievement Award to jo Joseph Joe Lewis is hereby awarded this certificate in recognition of his support of the culture and support of the blues and the Central Mississippi Blues Society. Presented by the Central Mississippi Blues Society, Inc. Presented by Malcolm Shepard, President on this day, April 5th, 2024. We have a resolution by the Board of Supervisors. Uh, Robert Graham, President, Anthony Smith, District 2, Deborah Dixon, Di District 3, Wanda Evers, Vice President, Bobby McGowan, District 5, uh, and then this is attested by Mrs. Eddie Jean Carr, the Chancery Clerk. And we have the United States House of Representatives Celebration of Life Resolution given by Congressman Benny G. Thompson, a member of the United States Congress. Knowing you for 28 years was not long enough, but I'm okay with that because I've had learned and gained so much knowledge from you, Granddad. You were a family man, very smart, and most of all, important, a God-fearing man. You were strong even when you were down sick and showed it in so many ways. Your words moved so many people, and you always knew just what to say, Granddad. You were hilarious and could cook the best steaks. I will truly miss you. Only the Lord knows what you're going through, and he knows what was best. 
You told me no one or nobody can tell you how to feel, so no matter what, I love you and I know you love me. Thanks for being in my life and loving me and my grandma, your children and your grandchildren. I will see you again. Love, Levante Bowden. You have always been there for me as I was growing up. You would take me to school, we would stop by the store, and you would get me some snacks. Then as I grew older, you would tell me to stay in school. Let nobody influence me in that, that you know you, you are a child of God. When I got in college, you would be there to help me understand college life. You always would help me to write my speeches for class. Thank you, Grandpa. When it was time to graduate, you were right there. Even though you were sick, you told me you were very proud of me and my accomplishments. Thank you, Grandpa, for all you have done. Love you and will truly miss you. Love, LaKayla. <clears throat> to our dad. Dad, you taught us so much to always respect ourselves and others and to work for what you want. Make sure to keep money in your pocket and never go around being broke. And to never give up, always keep pushing forward with God guiding you and to always have a plan in life. Dad, as you watched us grow into young men and ladies, you told us to make sure to love and take care of your mom along with each other and to stay powerful and put God first in our lives. Thanks for being our dad and loving us the way you did. We will see you again. Love, LaTanya, Alicia, Jonathan, and Little Joe. To my brother, remembering my brother, a man whose laughter could light up the darkest room, his sense of humor was infectious, as he would always have a... He always had a knack for making everyone around him smile. He was not just my brother, but he was my best friend. His love for life and the joy he brought to our lives will never be forgotten. We'll miss his jokes, his warm hugs, and that mischievous twinkle in his eye. Today, as we say goodbye, let's honor his memory by loving life to the fullest, just as he did. I love you, bro. You will be truly missed. Morris Grump Townsend. To my brother. I have thought about our lifetime of memories and have found myself smiling big or even smiling out loud. My fondest memories of our childhood were either we were playing our favorite game on Monopoly and you would always remind me that as the banker, all the money in the banks belongs to you. Or when we played war or two hand spade and you always managed to have two aces of spades. We were our own band and the broom was my microphone and my and mop was your guitar. Then there was that, pop, that protective side of you where the most of your friends, I was Joe Lewis' little sister. You were truly my big brother and proudly served that role well. And you made sure that everyone knew that. Thank you for the memories, the nonstop laughter, and most importantly, the love that you also expressed in our final days. Your pain and suffering is no more. Rest well, my big brother, until we meet again. Love, Lenore. Five minutes, if only I had five minutes the day you passed away, I would have had the time to tell you all the things I needed to say. I never got to tell you how much you mean to me or that you were the best that anyone could be. The last time I talked to you, I wish I had known. I would have said I love you and kept you on the phone. If only I had five minutes the day you passed away. I'll hold on to you with real tight hugs. I wouldn't want to go. I will tell you that I'll miss you. It's time to get your wings. To leave this life behind you and, and to leave this life behind you and enjoy all heaven's beautiful things. So wait for me in heaven. Don't let me come, come alone. The day the angels call for me, please be there to bring me home. Love Peggy. To my husband. Joey, I know I knew God was preparing me on the night of March 30th, 2024. When you told me to leave you alone and go get some rest, my beautiful, pretty lady. I am all right now. Just wanted to have prayer in my prayer closet. Thank you for being my wife and know that I love you with all of my heart. Joey, I know that God didn't make a mistake when he sent his angels on March 31st, 2024 from heaven and took you under his wings to rest. You will be missed for all the things that you did for your family. You made sure I would have breakfast every morning and dinner ready when I got off work with my favorite ice cream, Hock and Dye, Strawberry, and Ben and Jerry, Cher Cherry Garcia. 
You did this even when you couldn't get around. You continue to show your love for me. I thank God for you being in my life. And if I could do this over again and again, I would go back and forth to the doctor's office, hospitals, and sleepless nights. I know that you would do the same for me, Joey. Dad, you were my love, my best friend, someone that I would confide in. You would never let me do without, no matter what it would take to please me. My husband, I love and miss you so much. A part of my heart went with you the morning when God called you home. I thank God for you in my life. That's the kind of love we had for each other. So yes, I would do it in a heartbeat, Joey. I love you, but I know God loves you more. Sleep on, Joey. Take your rest until we meet again. Just know I will cherish all the memories we had together. For if love would have saved you, you would have never died. Love you forever, your wife of 33 and a half years, Johnny Van Lewis. <laughs> Truly be beautiful tributes. And we know that this is an occasion that it's not something that we can do today and it's put aside. But this is a journey that we all go through and it's gonna take some time. So we just celebrate God's, Joey's life and we thank God that we got a chance that in this past and we got a chance to meet somebody who would make us laugh, who would make us cry, who would be a protector, who would love people. And we just thank God and we give him all the honor and praise. And right now we're gonna have the soloist by Sister well, Sister Kamalita catching Scott. After the end, which we will have the eulogy by Bishop R. T. Clancy, Pentecostal Temple Church. And after which, funeral directors of People's Funeral Home is in charge. And may you all continue to keep this family uplifted in prayer. Take care and God bless you. Traveling grace to each of you that are from out of town. Thank you. my brother's day <laughs> and only Joe thank you Johnny only Joe could call my name Carmelita Ketchens Scott so I thank you when I saw that down I'm like oh wow yes and Johnny I, I want to just thank you for so much love and caring for my friend and my brother and and when people get married you know they're, they're there's packages and luggages that come with them. Well, with Joe came me. So I thank you, Johnny. And as Joe told us that I was his life longest friend. I was been his friend since nine years old. And how I know, because that's what Joe said, because, okay, I got old, I forgot. <laughs> but Joseph used to talk to my grandparents and and as he would call my grandfather, Mr. Tobai, he would go to the gas station and then when they missed him on Guyon Street, he was down talking to my grandfather, Mr. Jim Jones. We call him Papa Jim. And they talked and he was small. And these were older men that gave him wisdom, that helped him become the man that he is, and I'm not going to say was, the man that he is. But I thank you, Johnny, for loving me. And I also now got to apologize to men and nights that me and Joe was on the phone. And like Bumpsy said, we didn't talk all the time, but when we did, we was on there for three, four hours. Johnny would be laughing, and I know your side was hurting, and I'm sorry. And I would say, Johnny, get your husband. She's, uh-uh, that's your brother. And it was like me, him, and her was on the phone. And I mean, we talked about us. We just talked about us and, and, and had fun and enjoyed and uplifted and when my husband died eight years ago this month on the 27th Joe just simply text you okay I text back yes he said enough so that was the end of that until I saw him again but Joe and I didn't have to talk every day and all that because we knew we had each other we knew this when I went to people's to see my god brother and I was having a problem and turned around and there was Joe and Johnny. I'm like, wow, he went and got back up, you know, but they was there, they were one. And I thank you, Johnny, thank you. 
So don't think you're going to get rid of me or you know I'm going to go. Oh, okay. Mm. So just keep your head up and keep, them, keep us in prayer. And as Joe would say, I'm saved. I'm good. So don't y'all worry about me. Get yourself together. Get your life straight. Get to know the man. Get to know the man that fed the people with the two fish and the five loaves of bread. Get to know the heart healer and the mind regulator. Get to know him, and your life will be different. Then you will be able to see Joe again. <clears throat> when you hear my home gone, don't you worry about me. When you hear my home going, don't worry about me. When you hear my home going, please don't worry about me, my Lord, cause I'm just another soul, soldier on my way home. When you hear my home going, don't you worry about me. When you hear my home going, don't you worry about me. When you hear my home going, please don't worry about me, my Lord. Cause I'm just another soul, soldier on my way home. One thing that I know, Joe was born again. Mm, he made preparations oh, way back then. So when the Lord would call him, he'd be ready to go, my Lord. He's just another soul, soldier on his way home. So when you hear my home going, please don't worry about me. When you hear my home going, don't worry about me. When you hear my home going, please don't worry about me, my Lord. I'm just another soldier. I'm just another soldier. I'm just another soul, soldier, on my way home. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hey, I feel good. Let us give the Lord a hand. Let us give the Lord another hand. You know, I love God with a vengeance with a vengeance. And I'm honored to be here. I think proper tribute has been given to Joe. I think he was deserving of it. And we want to visit with y'all a little bit. Some of, some of us, we know each other. Some of us, we don't. But before I get ahead of myself, we want to recognize Pastor Polk in his absence, the other shoulders, the young minister that I heard, and some of the others that spoke so eloquent. Hey, we magnify the Lord. Amen. It's not a time to take down. Whether somebody say amen or not, guess what? God's still God. Now, don't thank God and stop being God. When you say home going, that's a difference than a funeral. He ain't going to a place where they cry. He said, lift up your voice and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Like he did. 
done something for you. He's opened doors for you. He woke you up this morning. He yet had mercy on you. That's the type of God that we serve. Not a, a, not a God that's dead. God looking for praise, for worship. I'll fall down and lick the COVID out of that market for God. Because he's God. If you got God, yes, you're going to get excited about God. Had God done something for you? Had God opened a door for you? God will open a door for you and run, hold it open for you. Yeah, God solicits praises from his people. We're not going to let the devil suck the oxygen out of our spiritual life because God is God. And we honor God with a praise. If I go to the White House, I'm going to honor God. I'm not going to get up there and change and not be who I am. I'm bought with a price. Oh, it's tight, it's tight, but it's right. If nobody do right, right is still right. If 1,500 people do wrong, wrong is wrong and right is right. Standing on the principles of what God said. And you know, before I got here, what I got to do ain't hard. When you tell the truth, it ain't hard. When you love somebody, guess what you'll do? Telling the truth is up to you on how hot you get. You're cool out. Let me tell y'all something. Plan is over. I don't play with me. Let's know somebody else. Good as God has been to us for times and seasons and years that he's allowed us. It ain't that you're so good looking now. It's the mercy of God. He renew his mercy every day. God got somebody going to praise him. I'm going to tell y'all this. I might not say it like somebody else. But I love him. I love him, y'all, show sure enough. If you know God, you can't help him but love him. Knowing of him is different. And we're going to try and sell a little myth here today. Here's the thing. With church people, anybody else, we'll put it to you this way, help you understand for clarity. You haven't seen anybody in jail yet give the hag. Everybody innocent. Same way with people. Everybody say. Yeah. They say. Right. Say it in your R I T E. Right. Right. Oh, y'all know what I'm talking about. Right. You shoot a man tonight and they have your funeral tomorrow, you say. Right. I don't lie. Yeah. I don't lie. If you want that, get you somebody else. Yeah. Oh, I don't play. With my soul. And I need God tonight. And he said, Why didn't you tell my people what they should know? And we're going to clear up something here. Now, you got two type of preachers. You got some that preach for the folks. And you got some that preach for God. God hired me. And when God get ready to fire me, he'll fire me. Without prejudice, I'm going to say this, attorney, not the deacon. Oh, well, I know it's right. You know the deacon can't preach what I preach, tell you to live right, quit shacking, quit going to the boat. Oh, it's tight, but it's right. It stands to reason. It stands to reason. Don't you know if you saved and it stands to reason, you're going to look saved? A police ain't going to look like no nurse now. I know I'm talking right. And I'm not, what I'm saying is not grievous because I want to leave you better than what I found. And when I go over to the scripture that I'm going to go to, and sometimes I don't care how old you get, you ought to be able to be enlightened on some things. Not so much who's right, what's right. The book's right. The book's the truth. And the way that you measure that is your amount of love that you have for God. Is God first, second, or third? If he anything but first, he ain't where he need to be in your life. Yeah. To know God, you got to know something about the word of God. Yeah. Here's the deal. Everybody right. Everybody saved. And that's what the devil is holding over our head. That's why we won't change. Because we don't see a need to change. Because we justify our own behavior. We didn't talk about the God that Joe served, but he was an apostolic 
participant. He, he took on the name of Jesus. Now, what am I saying to make a long story short? Except a man be born again. Let us go to St. John 3 and 3. 3 and 1. Except a man be born again. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. I believe God was greater than Paul. Huh? Oh, you know I'm right. So he said, except the man. If I love you, I said I'll tell you the truth. I got to tell you how. And unless you are born again, and the interpretation, if you can go to Daniel 2, 45, the interpretation is sure and the outcome certain. Y'all might have been throwing some dirt on me, but if you hadn't been born again, I don't care how the preacher get up here and squall and hold his ear and holler one day, you ain't going nowhere. That's a fact. The book said it. Well, what did God say? T tell the folks, preach the word. St. John 3 and 3 is the word. That's why I'm not under no condem condemnation. I'm not grieved. I'm not heavy burdened. Tell them the truth. The word do what it do. And I, and I trust in it. And let me say this to y'all. It ain't what come out of my mouth. It's what's in my heart. It has to be in your heart. If your heart ain't right, you ain't right. I don't care what the mouth say. If your heart ain't right, and it's not in your spirit, it's just not in your spirit. But don't go another day and be up here and don't have what you need. See, when you get up here, you want to go on to a better place where you can receive an inheritance. When I say an inheritance, go to that place that he's got furnished for you. You can't talk your way there. You got to live your way to heaven. That's a fact. Y'all know it's right. You might not want to change, and you don't have to change. All I get paid for driving the bus. If don't nobody do right, right is still right. And if 1,500 people do wrong, wrong is wrong. So you got to understand who God is. Do you think with one God, he need 10 ways to be saved for him? And there ain't but one God. There's one head of a country, one president, and most men should be the head of the house. I say they should. That might be debatable. And one God. And to know God, let me say this to y'all. To know God, to our friends, our distinguished guests, cousins, uh, whoever we might be. Yeah. To know the love of God passes, passes all understanding. Now, let me say this to y'all. Somebody think you all this and all of that. But God, to put up with us, he got to be God. God don't care nothing about your arrogance. You might think he do, but he don't. Get on your sick bed and see who's going to help you. See, I'm admonishing, I acknowledge God because he God. When Joseph was in Israel, down in Egypt, and Pharaoh made him over his whole house, over his ten brothers, and he said, if anybody say anything, you tell them I'm Pharaoh. Don't you know God, God? You can't help me like God. So I'm going to stick with God where I can get, my, get me some help. I know what side my bread brown on. Now, let us go to St. John 3 and 3. Some of you don't have your Bibles. And I want to, well, how do I know I've been born again? It go before and confessing with your mouth, because your life, you got to have a, a change of heart. Because if you saving worse than you doing worse things than before you got saved, go back and get saved again. What we do a lot of time until we're really taught, we just went out a lot of Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Y'all know what wearing our pretty clothes? Wearing our pretty clothes. <laughs> when I got saved, I stayed saved. If I work at McDonald's, I'm going to do it right. If I work at McDonald's. Now, I wouldn't make you think we could honor the courtroom, go to Madison and Clinton, we do right. And, and serve God any kind of way. Yeah. Come when you get ready, don't want folks saying nothing to you. Right. Don't want folks telling you this or telling you that. 
Really, God hates a proud look and a bad attitude. To get saved, you're going to have to humble yourself down. You know what you have to say to God? Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Even if you save, you still got to admonish God every day. You got to fear God. It's out to be a difference. If everybody liked my preaching, something wrong with it. I ain't trying to make you like it. Uh, if, if everybody like it, something wrong with it. Y'all know what the truth is. Let me say this to y'all. No doubt y'all are educated well off, and so on and so on. If a man can't read and write, and you owe him $100, and you give him 98, and he can't read and write, he still know you didn't give him all his money. Now let me tell you something else. Whether you say amen or not, let me tell you about the spirit. You still know the truth when you hear. It works on the inner man. All I get paid for driving. I ain't got to worry about what it's going to do. It cuts its own right away. The word is able to do what it do. Ain't no hair on my head going to fall to the ground because I represent God. You get on the dance floor and turn a flip. I'd say a turn and flip. I don't know what kind of dance they do now. But y'all know you do it. I'm crazy about God. That's a fact. A mouth will say anything. But you got to live something. I cannot start at Genesis today with you and go to Revelation. If I had the time, I would. I advocate Right things. If you got a wife, if you got a wife, treat her right. If she burned the biscuit, just eat the burn. I was married to one woman 46 years. And when I learned how to treat a woman, when I learned how to treat her, I treat her the right. You ain't got to hit her, you can verbally abuse her. That's the same thing. Treat her right. That's part of who you are when you are new in Christ. A new life. You think different. You were looking for a way to reach somebody to help them, not condemn them. Even though some people don't realize they need help. If you living and breathing and don't have the Holy Ghost, you need some serious help to tell you the truth. See, if you get sick, life is like a vapor. Now, let me say this. COVID killed a lot of people, but it didn't kill God. <laughs> and it's not over. So... I heard him say, we want to be ready when he come. Y'all know what, what right is. A lot of us were, didn't even go to no church when we come up. But we knew right from wrong. You were going to respect your elders and you weren't going to steal. What happened? You didn't have to go to church to learn everything. We got to practice those things that we understand to be true. We got to be passionate about it. And unless it's in your heart, you can't. Well, even if you don't believe me, will you believe the book? St. John 3 and 3, or 3 and 1. Except a man, Nicodemus, went to Jesus by night and said, what must I do, good master, to be saved? Do right for one thing. Am I saying we're the only one saved, but they the only one saved? No, I'm not saying that. You can be saved anywhere where the truth is and where you're obedient. Let me tell you what stopped you from being saved. Disobedience. Y'all didn't know that? Blaming somebody else won't change. You can't be saved in the chain and the same, what I'm saying. It's all now about being saved. And when I close, I'm going to say, then you will receive an inheritance. But there are certain people going to be at that party. And unless you have the Holy Ghost, well, what is the Holy Ghost? It's God himself. When you have the Holy Ghost, you're going to have the attributes, the nature, and the divine character of God. The, the greatest attribute of God is love. And let me say something else we won't get, what we won't do. Forgive. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt talk. How can you say, forgive you and you won't forgive your neighbor? That that you do well, 
Don't worry about it. But the area that you're coming up short in, yeah. that's what we need to work on. It's probably getting late in the evening with some of us. When I say late in the evening, I tell some of the young people, I'm kind of like a monkey with his tail cut off. Well, what you mean by that? It ain't long as it has been. <laughs> I'm talking about years. But he's been mighty good to me in allowing me to get my business straight. Y'all know what it is. When, you, when your children come in and you cry, all, you can hush if your business is all right. Today that you hear my voice, harden not his heart. His voice is not like my voice. His voice is a voice of authority and power. I can't save anybody. But he said, unless, unless he draw you unto him, I have confidence in what the word will do. The word do not go out and return void. Believe me when I tell you, it'll do what it's intended to do. Well, how you know? I was a wretch undone. When I wasn't saved, I know I wasn't saved. How you know? I ain't feel nothing because I didn't have nothing. <laughs> I didn't feel nothing. I just didn't have it, y'all. They call that calm mind. When you don't feel nothing, when there's no God in you, telling my kid, go bring your daddy his package. Well, no salvation in the package. Had them partaking of my sin, if you will. And now, I want my surroundings Holy. Well, what is holy? Y'all know what holy is. Godly. Godly. What, what, you, what, what you think church folk, folks do? We live godly. That's why they separate you from the world. There's a principle that uh, the, the, the bar is set for us to let other people be an example. I see why you can't witness if you turn and flip with them. You cussing. Well, what cussing and smoking cigarettes and got to do? Everything. Know ye not that your body is a temple of the living God? You defile this temple, I'm going to defile you. You don't want to sleep in no dirty bed, do you? What make you think God want to dwell in a dirty temple? God is a clean God. No, God is just God. God can demand what he want. And we need to be subject to God's discretion. Don't you know God can say, I want you up here next? Uh, well, up here ain't the problem. Are you ready? Do you have my ticket, Lord? Can I ride? That's what I, they say that's what a pig going to get out the pen. <laughs> that's, what it, that's what it's truth going to be told. I don't believe getting up here lying. There was a and I know what time is passing. There was a man down in Bolden went to a lady's. She invited him to say something over her husband. He was a, a renowned man. I don't know his name good. I don't know him. So he went and he said some things. So when he got home, she called him. Said, you messed up everything. And get what he told her. Said, you know what kind of life he lived. You don't need to get up here and lie. Let's live the life before we get here. Then we don't have to lie. And I don't believe that we were lying on the attributes that we, that we spoke over Joe. I knew him. What I knew about him most, he was a man. You know what a man, I ain't talking about just putting on some pants. A lot of pants webs. I'm talking about a man. Oh, y'all hear me. That he was. That he was a man. I can respect the man, I can deal with it. You gotta understand this. At the end of the day, especially men, we don't have nothing but our word. Our word ought to be our bond. St. John 3 and 3, and we're gonna conclude how, unless you've done that, unless you have been born again, as Jesus told Nicodemus, it wasn't no apostle, it wasn't Peter. You're going to get here and you're going to have a problem. And y'all know it deep down inside. I don't care what Reverend Ike said. You got to line it up with the book. And I didn't come here. Y'all know that. You can feel. I didn't come here to rain on nobody's parade. But I come here to tell you the truth. I've done you a disservice if I'm trying to cozy up to you. No, ma'am. No, sir. 
I, gotta, I want to sleep tonight. And I can say, Lord, I did the best I could. I told him what the book said. Then if you got a book, you got a problem, you take it up with God. And we know some of us got it, but you don't have to have it. God said that I came that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. You've got to ask somebody that has experienced the transformation. Going from one extreme to the, to the other. And the peace of mind that you have when you serve the Lord. The difference in your heart. How, uh, you don't look down on people. And we got this in Jackson. We you know, got a lot of homeless people. My problem is not the homeless. My problem is trying to keep them running over one. Because they just darting out in the street and so on and so on. But at the end of the day, they are human beings. And see, if you are saved, it gives you something we might have been missing. You should be kindly affectionate one to the other. Or we call it caring. Caring for mankind. And I'm going to say this probably off the record. You can get killed in... We won't say Jackson. We'll say Meridian. <laughs> and if you are not wealthy, you just did. That was a time we grew up when caring was in our heart. We went to see about people. If it happens at certain stores, they don't even close the store down. That's a deterioration of where our heart ought to be. As long as it's not us, we don't get involved. The church is here to help. The church is still equipped and have the tools to make a difference via the power that God has given us. We have power. We're just not using it because our interest in our heart is not where it should be. First, God has to be foremost. It's almost at a point now where you got job versus church. It ain't church versus job. God never asks you to quit your job to come to church. But then why do we leave church? We, we quit church for the job. God never asked us to do that. So we got to make our schedules line up with him. Let's go to St. John 3 and 3. I've enjoyed myself. I like being around people. And a preacher's job, it doesn't change. My ministry is the same. I can't come over here and tell y'all one something and go back down to my church and say something else. What I said in the one, I said in all. Do right. Do right. That's what I say. There's something that we fail to the discipline ourselves to do or realize that we ought to repent. Unless these repent, you're going to perish. They say, we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of our deeds whether they be good or bad. Don't treat folks like they treat you. You, tr you do what's right. You treat folks like you say. See, you say you say, so they're not going to act the same way you act. It's tight. It's tight, but it's right. I love it. You don't know what it, I, I, It's a big difference in being saved versus being lost. And I do understand everybody, like I say, is saving their R-I-T-E. It's just like nobody's in jail is in, is, is guilt. Nobody. It's always somebody else's fault. They then that are in the flesh of the natural man cannot receive spiritual things. Read Romans 8 chapter. Then he that is in the flesh persecuted him that's in the spirit. That's a fact. You know it's right. Oh, I know it's right. He then that is in the flesh persecutes him that's in the spirit. Most apostles in the Old and the New Testament, the apostles, the prophet, they, somebody killed them. Or they tried, even Moses. You know, Daniel didn't do nothing to nobody, did it? Did it? They just didn't like his spirit. They didn't set horses, if you will. Let us give over to the book. St. John, the third chapter, except a man be born again. And in order to, a man must. And let's see what the book say. You done heard that all your life, and you've been saying you've been born again. When and how do you know how? How? When did you get born again? Paul said, have you received the Holy Ghost since you say you believe? 
Well, what is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is God. Let us go to third chapter, I mean verse 3, for the sake of time. St. John 3 and 3, and I know you don't have your Bible. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot, he can't get it. He can't get there. You, you, can't, you ain't going to get there. So you got a problem naturally so when you get here. And if you hadn't been born again, you're going to have another problem spiritually. You're going to stay here. But now, because you, all of you don't have your Bible, well, how do I have the assurance that I've been born again? How do I have that assurance? Over in the book of Acts, and you read the same Bible I believe that I read, it said on the day of Pentecost, they received the Holy Ghost, our power, because they spoke in tongue as the Spirit gave them utterance. You know it's right. Don't you think if they had to get saved that way? Let me say what I'm saying. When they threw Daniel in the lion's den, well, what are you saying? It cannot be altered, and it can't be changed. What's written is written, ma'am. What's written is written. It can't be changed. They were going to take Daniel out. They said, no, it's the law. A man must be. And when you hadn't been, some joy that you would have, some spiritual joy, would over overwhelm the natural joy, then you would be robust. You would be, the devotion would be overflowing. Like this is a home going. When my wife had the whole home going, we shook the house where we were sitting. And he is worthy of it. Yeah, you know he's worthy of it. But don't put on. When you know better, guess what? Let's do better. So except a man be born again. Then Peter said unto them, repent now, repent. Okay, yeah, I did a little stuff. Repent and forgive. I did more than a little stuff. But once you repent, to repent is to become godly sorry. Yes. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Yes. Have mercy, Lord, on me, a sinner. Okay, then God said, I forgive you. Now, I'm going to say this. Then you're going to get baptized to have those sins washed away. Matthew 28, 19 said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You don't get baptized to teach. I teach you why you're getting baptized. You get baptized to have your sins remitted and to be covered by the blood. That's the reason you get baptized. Now, my grandboy been, did so many things, been shot up, shot at. And I said, Melvin, the only reason you're here, you're covered by the blood. The blood's in the water. You think you're going out in some water just to get cold? You're covered by the blood through the adherence of what the books say. Yes. Oh, it's tight, but it's right. Oh, y'all hear me? It's tight, but by right. adherence to the Bible. Not so much who's right, what's right. If you don't think these things are so, go back and check it yourself. Yes. If you want to be saved. Yes. And I ain't going to fall out with you about it. Because the word ain't going to change for nobody. It cannot be out. Ain't no in between. Amen. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Why can't you come together in the unity of the faith? God ain't no divided God. We brought that on ourselves to justify ourselves. But unless, now, hear me real good in my clothes. Unless you've been born again, and I stand by. The interpretation and the outcome is sure. When you get here, you're going to have a problem. You, you ain't going nowhere. I'll put it to you this way. If you hadn't been born again, so you understand, you ain't going nowhere back to funeral, back to people's funeral home. You're not going to crack the sky. But he said, if you have Acts 20, Acts 20 and 34, 35, 36, the 20 chapter, he said, if you have, then you're going to receive an inheritance among them that are sanctified. And y'all know what it say. There ain't going to be unholy up there. There ain't going to be no whole month. Not going to be a gambler. You're going to receive an inheritance. You know it's right. People just not telling you because think you're going to get upset. You should receive an inheritance among them that are sanctified. That's what the books say. Now, I don't know what you say it say. So with that said, y'all pray for me. I had a good... Thank y'all for allowing me. And first of all, 
We got to be honest. Honest with yourself. Somebody said, Joe has fought a good fight. Now it's your time. I'm, we've paid him adequate tribute. Now I'm throwing the ball to you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Go to Acts 19 and what Paul, he said, having passed through the upper coast of, coast of Ephesus, he asked them, have they received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said, we hadn't heard whether they're, there any be any such thing. We hadn't heard whether there be any such thing as a Holy Ghost. Then until 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 then, until then, what were you baptized unto? And when they heard this, they were baptized again. Once you clear on, then you know how to proceed. And if you don't know, you just don't know. When I was a foreman a long time for a Fortune 500 company, one of the first things they taught us, and you know that, if you don't know, just say you don't know. I'll get back with you. Because you, they knew you didn't know everything. Some things going on with you we're not seeing. That's why you need a preacher with a spiritual eye. Yeah. God knows when you happen when you ain't. Yeah. Sure do. Uh, you know I'm talking right. Money make you one kind of happy. God make you another kind of happy. I'm the kind of happy that come from God. Oh, I love it too, y'all. Didn't I say I'd jump out of an airplane for him without a parachute? Because between earth and glory, he'll catch you. What am I saying? You hadn't seen God. I hadn't either. But I know no doubt about it. He's real. He understands. But he don't take no mess. God ain't for no foolishness. So y'all pray with me. I pray with you. And I pray that you will look into that and see are those things so. I know they are so. And my number is available. Say, so, well, no, the Bible said you didn't have to be born again. You find that and I'm going to buy your lunch at the restaurant of your choice. And you can take anybody you want with you. No doubt, I'm that certain. You know it's right too. God didn't write that. He didn't send nobody to say it. He said it. Except a man be born again. You ain't going to make it. God don't look at no outer appearance. No way. God don't care much about pretty. You know he don't care nothing about ugly. So glad when this life is over, I will fly away to a land God celestial shore. Bye. 
Can we please get some flower bears? Transition. Not on earth, I'm moving 
today.